Hello, in this demo, we will see how the Big Cloud Fabric integrates with the VxRail cluster by creating an Enterprise VPC or eVPC in the fabric that greatly simplifies network provisioning via fabric automation and provides real-time visibility to the network admins into the virtualized workloads. Big Cloud Fabric is powered by an STN controller to build a leaf spine fabric using open networking switches. Unlike box by box networks, Big Cloud Fabric provides a single pane of glass and integrates with various VMware STDC products and operates the entire fabric as a single logical switch. Big Cloud Fabric leverages the cloud networking principles which use the construct of virtual private cloud like AWS VPC for logical isolation across multiple tenants. Similarly, Big Cloud Fabric controller uses enterprise VPCs or eVPCs in the fabric for each of your VMware deployments, allowing logical isolation and multi-tenancy. If communication is desired between the eVPCs, then eVPC peering can be established. Big Cloud Fabric provides an infrastructure eVPC for VxRail that greatly simplifies VxRail cluster bootstrapping and expansion. By auto-detecting the VxRail nodes, Big Cloud Fabric provides the flexibility of connecting VxRail nodes anywhere in the fabric. As port groups are created and VMs are provisioned in vCenter, Fabric Automation auto-provisions the logical networks on the Big Cloud Fabric, thus simplifying network provisioning. Network Policy Migration automatically provisions or prunes VLANs from the Big Cloud Fabric interfaces as UV Motion VMs to different hosts. Big Cloud Fabric also provides real-time visibility and analytics for the VxRail hosts and workload VMs along with end-to-end -end troubleshooting capabilities using the Big Cloud Fabric test path. For the demo topology, we have three rack Big Cloud Fabric setup, controlled by the Big Cloud Fabric controller. We have VxRail nodes attached to each rack and have workload VMs running on VxRail nodes that we will use in this demo. First, let's see how the VxRail infrastructure eVPC helps with the cluster formation. The VxRail nodes are auto-detected and placed in the management segment of the VxRail infrastructure eVPC, allowing the nodes to be auto-discovered during VxRail initialization. Management segment also acts as a logical network for communication between the VxRail manager, VxRail nodes, and the vCenter. vSAN segment provides the logical network to establish communication between the vSAN interfaces, which is required for successful validation for building the VxRail cluster. Similarly, vMotion segment provides the logical network to establish communication between the vMotion interfaces. Here we can see that the management, vSAN and vMotion segments have been created in the VxRail infrastructure eVPC. We connect to the VxRail manager initial IP address to begin deployment. VxRail manager is able to discover the nodes as BCF auto-discovered the VxRail nodes and placed them in the management segment. After filling out the required details, we begin the validation. Since BCF auto-discovered the vSAN and the vMotion interfaces, vSAN and vMotion connectivity is successfully verified. As we can see here, the cluster is now successfully deployed. We log into the VxRail manager and verify the health of the cluster. In vCenter, we can see that the VxRail nodes have been added to the vSAN enabled cluster. Next, we will see how the network provisioning is simplified for the VxRail workload VMs. We have created VM1 and VM2 as our workload VMs sitting on different VxRail nodes. Ping from VM2 to VM1 fails as the network is not provisioned yet. We will enable the vCenter integration so that we can create the VxRail workload eVPC. Once the integration is enabled, we can see that the segments for the workload VM is auto-created. VLAN 50, which is being used by the workload VMs, is automatically trunked on the interfaces connecting to the relevant VxRail nodes, and the VMs are auto-discovered in that segment. As we can see, the previously failing pings are now working. Next, we will see how the network policy migration works when performing vMotion. VM3 is currently residing on VxRail node 2 in port group VLAN 100. We will move it to VxRail node 3 and see how BCF migrates the network policy. Since VM3 is currently on VxRail node 2, we can see that VLAN 100 is trunked on the interface connecting to VxRail node 2. We now initiate the vMotion. Once vMotion is completed, VM3 is now residing on VxRail node 3. We can now see that VLAN 100 is being trunked on the interface connecting to VxRail node 3. 
Since VLAN 100 is no longer required on interface connecting to VXL Node 2, it is automatically pruned from that interface. Next, we will see how the BigCloud fabric provides real-time host and VM level visibility and analytics along with end-to-end -end troubleshooting capabilities using VCF TestPath. VCF provides quick summary of number of VXL hosts, virtual switches, endpoints and port groups defined in the vCenter. Scrolling down, we get an easy to interpret graphical representation of vSphere networking showing the virtual switches on each host, port groups on the virtual switch with the attached VMs, virtual switch uplinks and interface on the big cloud fabric where the virtual switch uplinks are connected to. We can also see the details about the VXL nodes like the hardware and the software version and also the CPU and the memory stats. Endpoint table shows useful information about the auto-discovered VMs like the name of the VM, power state, port group attachment, host where the VM resides, VM NIC connections, as well as the IP and the MAC information. Next, we look at the Fabric Analytics page. In order to make it easy for the network admin to troubleshoot virtualized workloads, BigCloud Fabric collects events from vCenter and displays them on pre-configured dashboards. As an example, let's click on the vMotion tab. Here we can see the number of vMotion events over time VMs involved in the vMotion and the vCenter managing those VMs. Looking at the events below, we can see the start and the end event for the vMotion along with the timestamp. Fabric Trace allows the admin to trace the end-to-end -end path of a packet with single click and no box-by-box -box hopping. A sample result of the Fabric Trace is shown here. It shows the path taken by VM2 to reach VM1 through the Big Cloud Fabric. Let's see how we got this information. Using test path, we select the source IP, destination IP and run the fabric trace. The result shows all the switches the packet traversed along with the ingress and the egress interfaces for each hop. If the trace is incomplete, you can see how far the packet traversed along and pinpoint the offending switch. Additional details about each hop are also presented on the left. This brings us to the end of the demo. Thanks for watching.